All right, I have an email here from Danny Cabello saying, hello, Falagan, my name is Danny. I'm starting on doing stylized characters at the moment. And I'm doing one of those. I've been having a lot of difficulties with her hair. Could you help me with a video doing the hair of the reference down below? If it's too much to ask, could you make a video for Come Road? And I will buy it. Well, no worries. I think um, I think I can give you some good information to get started. I actually have some courses on Gumroad that go through the process of sculpting hair as well, uh, and you guys can check that out. There's probably a link down below in the description, but I think I can give you some good information here to go ahead and get you started with how I would go about creating some hair like this. And the truth is, I would sculpt it like I sculpt anything else. I would start with a sphere. Let's pretend that this sphere is our character's head, so. I'll duplicate another sphere, and we'll make this sphere our hair. Let's just turn on transparency real quick. Start scaling this up. And essentially, I want to start by blocking out the major shape of the back of the head. From what I can tell, there's this major shape here, and then just one larger strand, and then there's like a couple stray strands of hair kind of flying off here as well. So let's just focus on the major shape. We'll pull this down, use our large move brush, and just start shaping this up. It looks like it goes from thin to thick, so it's a little bit wider here on the bottom. And we'll just kind of start moving this geometry around really simply. Then from there, what we can do is use a selection brush or a masking brush, really whatever you want to do. I am, let's see, let's just use a quick, we'll just cut it out really fast, a quick selection. And I'll turn on double so that we can see backside facing polys. So very quick, very messy here. Let's, let's just do that a little bit. Maybe something like this. I'm not going to make this super accurate because I'm just going to do this quick for the demonstration. So let me delete that geometry. So essentially we just have this kind of half sphere. So from here, what do we want to do? Well, we want to shape this up a little bit more, maybe give it some thickness to start sculpting on it. Essentially, during this stage, you don't want to be worried about cleanliness. This is so jagged and ugly, and it's not the end of the world. So maybe we can start off with just a quick Dynamesh. And from there, use a Move Brush. Ooh, that's, you know what? That's way too high poly. So let's lower our Dynamesh resolution. There we go. Much better. Essentially, what we want is a lower resolution that acts as insurance, I guess, is how I would describe it, so that you don't end up sculpting anything that you don't need to at this level. So just kind of pay attention to the silhouette. You know, there's a little bit of a dip in. Whoops, turn off symmetry. There's a little bit of dip in on this side, and it's a little bit more rounded over here. And her head's tilted and a bunch of other stuff. But once you spend some time kind of getting that shape up to where you want it, what I recommend doing is remeshing and cleaning this up. So I'll do a Z remesh down at 0.1 just to get really low. This is as low as Z remesh will allow you to go. You could actually go, I think, a little bit lower by using some of the half attributes in the Z remesher menu. But we're pretty much doing the same thing here, just keeping it really simple, messing with the move brush. And let's say this was exactly where I wanted it. It was matching the silhouette perfectly, and we're not going to spend the whole time to do that. So let's just say, good, good enough, right? All right, so at this point, what do we want to do? How do we get some of these individual strands and start breaking up the form? And how do we create something like this geometry up here? Well, I would probably handle this the exact same way, but I'm thinking that there's maybe a little bit of a different way we can do it. So let me subdivide that geometry and just delete the subdivision levels. So I want something a little bit more smooth to apply this to. And I'm going to be using something called the Cube Tube Brush. This is a brush that is available on my gum road. I think it's only a few bucks. You can go check it out. There's a link probably down below. But I'm going to lower my Z intensity with this brush. And that'll start to make it a little bit more thin. And I think you can probably see where I'm starting to go with this. So we're going to use this to start breaking up our larger shape and creating these strands of hair. But this is a pretty boring shape. This isn't exactly what we want. We never want to have you know, just a straight, parallel shape all the way through. That creates something that's really, really boring. 
So to alleviate that, I'm going to open up my stroke menu and go into the curve modifiers, turning on size and adjusting this little um, this little graph here. So this is saying from the beginning of the stroke, go large to small to the end. So you can see what that looks like. So we start getting a little bit more taper through there. And you can do this with other brushes. This brush is something that I made, and you guys won't have it unless you own it or bought it from my Gumroad already. But for something like this with the curb, curve, uh, curve tube brush, that was a mouthful. Normally, it's not a super hard one to say. But the curve tube brush, you can get a fairly similar effect by going again in here, messing with the size, and we'll just kind of crank it up and down. And there we go. So we're, we can use something like this as well. There's a lot of different curve brushes, and there are actually some modifiers that you can mess with with this brush to get a pretty similar effect to my cube tube brush. The only difference being that the geometry won't be as clean on the endpoints, which is something that I really appreciate having. So that's probably something that I would start playing around with, curve brushes if you haven't already. So essentially now you've blocked out the major shape and you want to start adding some more breakup. So we'll start here, let's see, we have one stroke coming off the head and wrapping down and around this way. So we can maybe start with our brush up here and wrap it down and around this way, sure. We'll say that that is about where we want that. And maybe we can make that a little bit smaller. So let's try that one more time. Beautiful. All right, so we got this. And one thing that I would say that you want to keep in mind while doing something like this with curve brushes, you might want to come into your brush depth and lower this value. Because the larger you make these strokes, the more the geometry will be sticking up off the surface. And that's just going to make your hair larger and larger over time. So to avoid that brush depth, get that embed a little bit closer. And then that form will be fitting your silhouette a little bit better like what we have here. So let's see, we got our geometry. So we can just delete or split that off. We'll just split it for now. If I smooth that, you can see the shape that we're starting to get. So what I like to do is use my Z modeler brush, come in here and start creasing up some edges, hold the space bar over an edge, and just set it to crease edge loop complete. And we'll just start creasing up a couple of these. Unfortunately, creases do not work with insert mesh brushes. You cannot retain those, unfortunately. But at least this way, you know, it's pretty easy to set this up, get the basic shape that you want, and then start adding in your creases. You can also add in additional edge loops and everything else. And then from here, it's just a matter of playing around with the shape, using your move brush, starting to manipulate the form, and of course, adding in uh, additional strokes. Same thing up here for this larger chunk. I would do the exact same thing. Grab my cube tube brush and just start with a basic shape, coming down and wrapping this way. If we can continue that line, whoops, if I can snap that, there we go. And it just kind of wraps down and around that way. And let's see, we'll just split this off. So we have this chunk of hair. And then I would just start ever so slowly rotating and moving and manipulating my vertices to get that into place. And then for an area where there is something like this super hard turn, what I would recommend doing is using the Z modeler brush to either crease an edge loop or instead bevel an edge loop like this and just do it really tight. And what that does is when this gets smoothed, these, um, the form here will turn a lot more sharply. So let me show you what that looks like with some creases. So crease edge loop complete, crease up a couple of these all the way down to the bottom. It's a little rounded down there. And maybe that's something you want. You can play around with it. But we'll add a little bit of rotation here. Just really quick. And you can start to see what that looks like. So we're starting to get a pretty similar effect here, albeit it's not matching the silhouette or the major form. But that is what I would recommend for this. Play around with some curve brushes. But of course, treat it like anything else. Start blocking out the most basic shapes. And then from there, start adding some more complex form with the curve brushes. 
Or, you know what, another method that I love doing is just chunking it out, just splitting it up. You can also handle it that way. It's really up to you. The world of ZBrush is your oyster, your beautiful 3D oyster. Awesome. Well, good luck with your hair. I hope that was helpful for you, and I'll see you guys in the next one.